section on exactly the same model. Each dissector is watched on the screen from Adelaide and gets individual instruction as to what and how they should proceed with the dissection. This is constant observation, supervision and instruction. So, so take it up as high as you can and then we'll be able to see our frontal. On completion of each of their dissections in Hokkaido, Adelaide then does a dissection demonstration on exactly the same model which each of the delegates have dissected, thereby reinforcing the steps, the anatomy and the procedure. What I think we should do now is to improve our access for our instruments we want to remove We want to remove the front face of the suprabullar frontal cell so we can get an angled instrument because as you can see here the axis is very very tight I would use the curette here like it is just put the curette go behind yeah now and now pull hard up against the beak and please reach the beak number 2 leave the wall is session two. Yes, yes. Number two. You need to look at the screen. You need to take the uh, screen. Yeah. In the new models, we are also able to raise septal flaps. These models have had the mucosa printed on the bone. Here we are raising a auxiliary flap and tucking it between the middle terminate and the septum. The models also allow for the demonstration and the performance of a frontal drill out in all of the specimens. Now we have our septal window. Now you start to see we come into the floor of the frontal sinus. First uh, landmark for us is going to be the uh, skin. So that's with a zero degree slope. You can see a very wide oval shaped opening into the uh, frontal sinus and that's what we want and that's what it looks like from the top each of the dissectors is now monitored and tutored on all of the finer aspects of the frontal drill out procedure you can see you enter the olfactory neuron you need to come across here okay that's good uh, station three you can station three is totally easy this you can see where the olfactory neuron is now you can join the two sides so if you look here on the axial scan, what you've done is you've drilled the bone away here and exposed this part. And there's a space. Uh, it's, uh, if you look at um, station one, mm -hmm. uh, look at the frontal T. You see how the T pushes forward and how we've lowered the, the uh, um, frontal T. We also now have models that have tumors, such as this pituitary tumor case with the carotid artery in it. After raising a septal flap, we then open up the sphenoid sinus. We identify the carotid artery and an injury is made into the carotid. Significant bleeding is seen. The skills of the hover to control the blood flow and then to place the muscle patch over the injury site to control the bleeding and then the septal flap is placed over that and supported by nasal packing.